Word, and the Word was with God. And Jesus, is, we later find out in verse 14, is the Word. He says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In other words, when God is saying, let there be light in Genesis, it's the Lord Jesus. And he's speaking things. He's the Word of God that is bringing everything into being. But here is a time when He needed something from one of us. When there was something that He didn't know or that He had just simply because He had never experienced it. Maybe He knew everything intellectual or everything mental that there was to know. Everything academic that there was to know about death. But He had never died and He wanted to talk to someone who had died and came back and could tell about it. Because Jesus needed to be braced up. He needed to be shored up. He needed to be strengthened. He needed His battery charged. He was facing the most difficult time of his human life. I ministered to my aunt this week. Her, her oldest daughter passed away, my first cousin. I couldn't go to her and say, Hey, Peggy, I know just exactly what it's like to lose a child. And let me tell you how that is or what that is like. I, I couldn't tell her that. There was a time in my young ministry when I would go up and put my arm around someone and I would say, I understand when I didn't. Or I would try as their pastor to, to comfort them by saying, I know what you're going through. I wanted to empathize with them, but I didn't. I couldn't. You know, you and I have all been broken in some way or another, haven't we? We've all crashed into something. We've all been busted up and hurt in some way. When someone comes into our church, if they say, I've, I've just gone through a terrible divorce, I, I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing the divorce, I, I have to say, I love you, brother or sister. But I don't know what that feels like, but there are people in our church who love Jesus. And God has given them victory in their lives. And they've seen, they've even seen overcoming faith. Someone says, I've gone bankrupt. Or I've lost my house. Or I've lost my job. My husband has died. My wife has died. My mom is still living. But if there's anybody ever comes to our church and they say, my, my dad has passed away. I can put my arms around them and I can cry with them and say, you know, my dad's gone too and I miss him. There are people who need things like that. They need to know that they can go through that and come out the other side. They know that they can make it through that, that God can help them and that God's faithful. And you can testify to that. You're living proof that God can take a broken life. God has forgiven me. I was a criminal. I... I was someone who made terrible mistakes. I'm damaged and I'm broken. So Lord Jesus wrapped His arms around me and he, he loved me and He forgave me. We can testify to that. I believe that God is going to lead people through those doors or through that door and they're coming here and they're looking and they're, they're looking for hope. They're looking for some glimmer of light at the end of a dark life. And there's probably someone sitting here, maybe that less, or that least unlikely, that most unlikely person, that person you least guess, who has been through some kind of tragedy of, of some kind of dependency or some kind of a, a abusive relationship. Someone who has faced some kind of addiction or has faced some kind of darkness and is just literally surrounded them. We can be that person who can say to them, there's hope. I have been to the other side, Lazarus could say, and here I am to tell you what it's like to die. He could tell Jesus about the fever or the aches or the sickness or the pain. He could tell Jesus about the fogginess of mind, the blurred vision, 
The times when he would lapse into unconsciousness or the times when he would wrestle with everyone who loved him out of delirium. Lazarus could say, I've laid and I've sweated and I've cried out to God and I've been afraid and I've been weak and I knew that I was about to die. I can see the darkness coming. That's what it's like to die. That's what it's like to die. I believe Jesus got something he needed that night. I believe the reason he's, his last stop before going into Jerusalem was Bethany because the person who had the power to raise Lazarus from the dead had never experienced what Lazarus had. That's church. Church is not a religious obligation that you check the box and say, well, I went to church. Or God looks down and says, hmm, boy, <laughs> he went to church today. It's a star. It's not an obligation or a responsibility. It's not even a ceremony or a ritual. I believe church is that place where you go. You know, I, I have to tell you that I have, probably at, my, at this time in my life, I have the richest, most personal, intimate walk with God that I ever have in my entire spiritual life. But I still never sense his presence more than when I'm with you. He's in you. I can see. He's leaking out all over. Amen. He's shining from every broken spot in your life. He's shining out from every crack and crevice, from every wrinkle and he's in you. That's where I sense him. That's where I see him. That's where I hear his voice most clearly. There are times when I'm in my closet or down on my knees and I'm talking to God and I say, you know, I've heard you more clearly before. You know, church is not a place where I come to be religious or even spiritual. It's a kind of place where I come to be with you because you're vessels that you bear Him wherever you go. And when we all get together and we put all that together, it's like taking a piece of wood that's on fire here, a piece of wood, a piece of wood, another piece of wood over here and all those embers. And you put them together and you have a big fire. There's a lot of warmth that comes from that. It meets a lot of needs. Man. There are things that have happened in your life that maybe you're ashamed of. You shouldn't be. There are things that God has forgiven you of that you haven't forgiven yourself of. Forgive yourself. There are things that you probably wouldn't want to mention to anybody. But listen, when someone comes in through that door and you find out that they're wrestling with the same demon that the Lord Jesus helped you fight, maybe even years and years ago. Would you go help them? Amen. Find out a way to establish a connection with them. Go put your arm around them and say, listen, you want to talk to somebody who's been there, just let me know when you want to talk. I came out on the other side. You might have to tell them I'm kind of beat up. I'm kind of bruised. I'm, a, I'm kind of broke up. But I'm alive and here I am. Here. Those demons, well, you know what I used to say when I'd come in and I'd be beat up with black eyes? I'd say, you ought to see the other guy. You ought to see the other guy who had to fight Jesus as he fought for me. Let's be that kind of church. Let's, sometimes, folks, I believe when somebody comes in through our doors at the Walnut Grove Crow Baptist Church, they are saying in their heart, This is my last stop. Yeah, it's the end of the road. If I don't get something today, I never will. If I don't find some light, if I don't, if I don't see the way out I'll, today, I'll, I'll never make it. It's my last stop. My last chance. This is done. If I can't find what I need here, I'll never find it anywhere. Let's don't miss that. Let's don't let's be sensitive to that. It, it was a church who loved me, and reached out to me, and told me about Jesus. I remember when as a, I didn't like preachers. They scared me. I heard Brother Junior Hill say one time, he says he never met a pastor he didn't like. He said he had a few close calls. But uh, for the most part, he likes pastors. Well, I like pastors now too. They used to seem to be overbearing and loud and kind of frightful. When I became a Christian, I fell in love with a pastor of our church. And uh, I kind of became his shadow. I began following him around. He, everywhere he'd let me go, I'd go visiting with him and 
knocking on doors or ministering for the church, whatever. And I remember it came time for him. He, was going, he had gotten married and he was going away to school and he really needed to leave our church and he could no longer be our pastor. I remember the last Sunday that he was there, I remember shaking his hand. I said, Brother Steve, thank you for telling me about Jesus. It was the church. It's where I found what I needed. What I needed. He colored the pages of my life in ways that I never could. Let me pray for you today. We're going to extend a hymn of invitation now. And that's the time for you to make a decision and choice. Time. I've talked long enough and it's time for God to speak. Time for the Spirit of God to speak to your heart. You don't have to come down the aisle or take me by the hand in order to make a decision, but you can if you need help. If I can pray with you, pray for you. If there's some decision you've already made and you just want to let everybody know, listen, when you do that, it's not a way of bragging or just uh, being open or up outward about something. It's there's nothing, listen friends, if we don't see God working in your life here, we'll just drop and wither away. I come every Sunday looking to see what God's doing in your life. And when we're asking you to walk forward, we're saying, please tell me what God's doing in your life. It, it fans a flame in my life. It feeds me. It encourages me. Would you stand this morning, Brother Andrew, what's our hymn of invitation? 238. 238.